a sweep, a sweep of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah, that'll do. Woo! You are locked on red. Your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome in to Locked On Reds. My name is Jeff Carr. His name is Steve Offenbaker. And we are freaking energized again because we're back. And we love this Cincinnati Reds team. We always have. Always will because it's like basically been since birth for both of us uh, that we've loved this team. This is my sixth season hosting the Locked On Reds podcast. This is Steve's third season alongside me. He's been hosting Reds podcasts as long as I have. We love this Cincinnati Reds team. And we try to be as positive as possible about our favorite team because, well, quite frankly, this entire season has been the road less traveled. But hey, every day we're going to discuss the big thing on everybody's mind in Red's country. We'll dive into geeky numbers and we'll overreact. Yeah, I'm probably admitting that right now uh, the, uh, to the everyday movements of the major league baseball marathon season, because we are locked on reds and part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. And I'm glad that you're with us today because we got the lot to talk about starting with the fact that we've got updates on Noel V Marte and Christian Encarnacion strand and what that means for the roster that's coming up later on in today's show. We're going to dive into just how good this team has been on the mound this year. Cause quite frankly, with all the struggles of the lineup, it's been hard to talk about how good the pitching has been because the pitching kept getting unlucky and kept getting those losses and all this other stuff. But we're going to start. Of course, I mentioned the lineup with some dudes that are getting right at the plate. Some guys who we badly needed to see them turn around. That's all coming up on today's episode that is brought to you by game time. Download the game time app and create an account and use code lockdown MLB for $20 off your first purchase terms apply. And Steve, there are no terms that apply when it comes to sweeping the Los Angeles Dodgers. Apparently that's all the reds needed to get right was to play the most expensive team in baseball. Hey, we talked about at the end of the week on our live show on Friday, Jeff, we talked about that. If we were in a hitting, if the hitting continued the way that it did the last time they played the Dodgers and the starting pitching continued the way that it was the last time they played the Dodgers and the bullpen could just get it together. They could win this series. Now I said, I wasn't expecting a sweep, but I love that they overachieved <sighs> and it started with just the reds getting on the board early and sending a message. Spencer steer set the tone. This was a get right series for him. Uh, it was, it was Huge. nice to see him break out of that little funk that he was in Homer in back-to-back -back games uh, had a big double in the final game of the series. He's hitting the ball and seeing the ball really, really well. And I think everything kind of cascaded from there. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've called him the mashed potatoes of the Cincinnati Reds play. Well, the mashed potatoes has been pretty cold here recently, but this series, they warmed back up because Spencer steer was all over it, making some good plays in the field too. I mean, there's maybe a question to be had of, you know, first base, is this not a good idea? Like he he's looking pretty good out there, but at the plate, he is back to that stabilizing force in the middle of the lineup that when you need a hit. When you need a ball in play, Spencer Steer's going to give it to you. And I love what I saw from him in this series. You know, Steve, and, and, and two, I, there's a couple of more guys I want to get to. And I, I forgot about this first, and I, I apologize. But happy Memorial Day uh, to everybody out there. If, if you served in our, our country's military, a veteran and all this, thank you so much for your service. What you have done has paved the way for us to be able to just sit here and bloviate about our favorite Cincinnati Reds baseball team. So thank you so much for that happy Memorial Day. And it's a happy Memorial Day because this lineup got right and because Spencer Steer got right because Jonathan India got right. I don't know. And there's, there's no evidence of this other than what he did this weekend, because is Jonathan, uh, is Jonathan India an every day because I called him out last week. I said, and it was the title of a podcast that he's dropping the ball, that this is his opportunity where everybody's hurt. The lineup is floundering. The lineup needs any kind of leader whatsoever. 
Jonathan India finally stood up. Multiple games. Wasn't just the one game. Of course, the Grand Slam and a three-hit game, triple shy of the cycle. That was fantastic. But he had a big hit on Sunday. He was a big part of Friday. This entire series had Jonathan India stamp all over it. And that is something that we have missed for most of this season. Hopefully, this weekend is just a preview of things to come for him the rest of the way. Yeah, that that don't underestimate the impact of that grand slam because after that grand slam there were a lot of slumping shoulders in the dodgers dugout and a lot of soldiers on the dodgers on the field it it took the wind out of their sails and it it let them it it reminded them you know that they're human and psychologically that grand slam was really really important and i think carries over into the other two games of this series like don't underestimate the value of that big blow from jonathan india Yeah, and it's something that all season long, he looks like he's had good plate discipline. He just, Mm -hmm. once he's a great at bats, right? He's had tremendous at bats over the course of the year. Forcing the pitch count up and up and up. It's just when he swung the bat, that's when his power went away. His power was in forcing the pitcher to throw a lot of pitches. The moment he swung, it was gone. But we saw it this weekend. It, It started to turn around. But overall, Steve, this, this lineup just came together. We started seeing some guys break out of slumps. We saw Homer from Will Benson. We saw Santiago Espinal get a few hits and it was great to see. And brace yourself, buckle up, strap in. Here we go. Stuart Fairchild is a major league baseball player. He is no longer in my mind, a four a player. Stuart Fairchild is a valuable player platoon player at the major league level. He is an all-star level defender in the outfield and him and Will Benson make the perfect outfielder. Let's just platoon it, put them in, roll the rest of the way with it. I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in Stuart Fairchild has proven me wrong. I'm in Steve, Steve, aren't we the podcast that doesn't like Stuart Fairchild? That's what I'm told. We're we're not allowed to like Stuart Fairchild. No, that's what I'm told. Stuart Tremendous was, defense. Just start with the defense, right. Jeff. That was what fantastic. What the heck was going on Friday. out there? Tremendous defense. Friday, Stuart Fairchild was a black hole in center field because any baseball that came close to him ended up in his glove. In fact, there was that fantastic stat. And I know John Sadak shouted it out on the television broadcast. And I saw some folks tweeting about it as well. That Cespedes family barbecue, which we've had them on the podcast once last year. Um, they tweeted out the stat. They said four of the five longest hit balls in that game found his glove. And that was just a fantastic stat in and of itself. The two catches up against the wall, the one where he banged his shin against the wall and kind of limped afterward. But he was like, uh-uh, there ain't no way you're taking me out of this game, man. I'm, I'm staying in this game. There's been so many plays like that. And I, and I think where we erred is that we said for every good play that he makes, he will make an equally bad play that will completely even it out and make him just a replacement level quadruple A guy. He's better than that. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he's an everydayer. I, I don't think he should be a guy that's out there in the lineup, no matter who's on the mound, nope. but in fact, he should combine... never face another left-handed pitcher ever. Right, 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 right-handed. So Will Benson Sorry, should yeah, never face yeah, that's a lefty. I mean. no, there's another right-handed pitcher. Yeah. Will Benson should never face another left-handed pitcher. That's what I mean. If if you combine the, the mini lion bots of Will Benson and Stuart Fairchild into one uh, giant lion bot, you get uh, Voltron. And that's how this works Look for an outfield with spot. The 80s tunes. Finally, something <laughs> I understand. All right. But, but I'm here. I'm here for it. Stu is the man. And this weekend showed why this weekend was so phenomenal. Steve, so cathartic. And if we can be completely transparent, pull back the curtain for just a minute. If you watched Friday's episode, if you listen to Friday's episode, you heard concern, you heard mm. frustration, you heard two guys that have been just ripping their eyeballs out for the last three weeks because they've been watching some bad baseball. And this weekend, man, this weekend has reset everything. We are back, baby. I am so pumped. 
swept. No, I absolutely needed I needed this sweep of the Los Angeles Dodgers. And it's it's a great momentum shift. I tweeted this out a little bit earlier, Jeff. This was exactly what they needed to, to shift the momentum, to change the narrative, and now get ready to play in division. The St. Louis Cardinals are coming to town, yeah, come, and the man. Reds need to be ready to beat the snot out of them. And mm-hmm. and 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 this was this was the restoring of the confidence that I know they needed heading into division play. This was this was everything because three weeks of just bad baseball culminated into a weekend where everyone was everyone was convinced that the best they could do is win one out of the three, and they were most likely going to get swept by the Dodgers. And they're like, "Uh, uh-uh, baby, we're going to sweep them." They they won the season series, Jeff. They won the they season. Win the they season won the season series. series with the two best teams in the National League. Yes, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Baseball, man. What, what are you gonna do? All right, do? all right. This is what I know, Jeff. As as fun as the offensive outpouring was, it was great to see grand slams and runs being scored and three wins in a row. That's a winning streak, by the way, Ooh. and a sweep of the Los Angeles Dodgers. But so we figured out some other things. The Reds have their ace. The bullpen got its act together, and I'm pumped up, and we're talking pitching coming up next. Take the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets with Game Time. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. If you haven't used the Game Time app, you are really missing out. Jeff and I use this app all the time, especially going to Reds games. We head down to the banks, we find a good parking spot, we post up at our favorite eating or drinking establishment, uh, do some pre gaming, talk about what we're, we're looking for with the Reds, and then right before it's time to go and we get our checks we jump on the game time app and we order our tickets great thing about this app is you know exactly what you're going to be paying with their all-in pricing if you're not sure what the view from your seat is going to be they'll show you that as well you know exactly where you're going to be sitting exactly what it's going to look like and exactly what it's going to cost uh, and right now new customers are going to get twenty dollars off by using that code locked on mlb and that's twenty dollars off they're already amazingly low prices again just download the game time app Create an account and use the promo code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Jeff, we're going to get into a bunch of stuff, but first, If you haven't had a chance to check out Locked On Sports today, please make sure that you do so. It's a free 24-7 streaming sports channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories from the Locked On Podcast Network. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. It streams 24-7. It's on YouTube and for free on the Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Coming up on tomorrow's show, we're going to get in to uh, the first game between the Reds and the Dirty Birds. We think it's going to be well we know it's going to be nick lodolo lodolo back from the injured list he's going for the red legs what we're not sure of yet is if he'll be facing lance lynn or if he'll be facing old friend sonny gray because as of our recording the cardinals and the cubs are in a rain delay they have not gotten that game underway so uh interesting to see how this plays out we'll be talking about whoever it is uh coming up on the next episode what we do know jeff Lodolo's coming back. That makes the rotation even better. And the rotation has been absolutely stinking phenomenal. They found their ace. Let's start there. I am ready to say that Hunter Green heard the detractors. Hunter Green heard all of us question him and his ability to find that next level to go from thrower to pitcher to be that ace to, to, to meet that level that we were putting upon him he heard all that and he has embraced all that because he basically since that start in texas that i was at i'm taking credit for this <laughs> that start in texas he has been pretty much lights out yeah i mean every single time he's taken the mound even if he doesn't have his best stuff because i think you could argue on Saturday, he didn't have his best stuff against the Dodgers, but he still battled. He still worked perfectly and he still pitched beautiful baseball. The, the, the outings that we have seen from him, while he's not throwing a ton of third pitches and we didn't pull up any specific numbers about pitch counts or things like that. I know this, he's locating that fastball mm-hmm. and you can sort of tell 
like a Saturday was one where he didn't consistently have that location of the fastball. And that's really where he had to work through high pitch counts and things like that. But he has been able to buoy that with great usage of his slider, being able to drop that into the bottom of the zone, keep it out of the middle, which was where it was getting clobbered. And that still sets up another fastball that he can come back with and dominate hitters. I mean, he had Shohei Otani. Shohei Otani hit that triple. I'll mm -hmm. grant him that. But that first at bat, Hunter Green had him on skates, buddy. And, and that has been the Hunter Green that we have seen all year long. There is just a, another level to what he is able to provide the Reds on the mound this year. And I love it. This is what we've been waiting for. Well, and he was dropping in that splitter also on occasion yeah. in that start. And it looked pretty good as well. And just as a side note, you know, we're so used to watching the blinding, blazing speed of Ellie De La Cruz on a daily yeah. basis. Shohei Otani on that triple he pretty fast <laughs> look he but it looked like he was in a home run trot I was I was mm -hmm. watching on on the TV and I'm like he's gonna be out he's not even running and somebody said then that suddenly he was like, at third base yeah like I think like Shohei thought that the ball was like stuck in the wall and that he was gonna have to go back to third anyway so that's why he slowed up but it was yeah I mean you're still right like he still ends up in third anyway, even though it's more of a trot than the, anything. It was the easiest jog of a triple that I have ever seen a player. It didn't even look like he was working hard to get there. It was it, that that man is amazing. He, this he is the best player. He's a best player ever. I, I I'm, he, I'm telling you, he's phenomenal. He he's a he's a friggin' unicorn. I hope that you got down to the ballpark to watch him this this uh, past weekend. But okay, so okay, I pulled up some numbers. This is going to make you happy. Um, pulled up some numbers on the pitch count for Hunter Green. Eleven percent mm -hmm. were splitters. He had twelve. Yes, it splitters looked great. In it that was game. fantastic. Yes. Yeah. That that is that is massive. He had twenty three. We're talking about the 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 the, the crazy expensive. Um, Wall Street, Fortune 500 baseball team, Los Angeles Dodgers, 23 swings and misses for Hunter Green. Just absolutely rose to the occasion. Now, Jeff, I want to use your favorite word in all of baseball now because we have to talk about this. Bullpen day. <laughs> but it worked out good again. This is the second yeah. bullpen day against the Los Angeles Dodgers that went really, really well for the Reds. Yeah, it really did. Um, I, and I'm not going to lie. There, there, there are two different kinds of bullpen days, Steve. There's the 2023 Reds bullpen day, which was mm -hmm. good Ugh. Lord. We don't have a starter. Let's throw every other pitcher we have on the roster at this game. And then there's 2024 bullpen day where it's like, all right, we got to play and Brent Suter's going to start it off. Nick Martinez is going to follow him. And those two guys are going to make up five to six innings of this ball game. And then, oh, by the way, on Sunday, we're going to bring in Carson Spires, who is slowly becoming a bit of an X factor, a little bit of a dark horse pitching weapon for the Reds. Not saying he's the best, but he almost he's been, finished he's been a pleasant surprise. Yeah, he's, he's been, been a, a very pleasant, pleasant surprise. surprise. That would have been, and I was kind of rooting for it, but I absolutely agreed with the move to bring Diaz in after he gave up the double. Yeah. Um, but when when Spires and, was and, pitching. And because of that, just to finish that thought with Alexis yeah. Diaz, that was another opportunity to infuse into a player's veins some confidence. Yes. He comes in, he gets the save, he snuffs it out in a game that was not a foregone conclusion. The Dodgers right. could have very easily made that up in a, in a blink of an eye. So there's another prime example of this whole series being get right for guys. I think it was a get right for Alexis Diaz in that moment. He, he was the closer again. Yes. He was the guy that you can rely on to shut the door against anybody Dodgers included. Um, but there, there was that funny little quirkiness of like, man, I really wanted Spires to finish that inning because mm -hmm. then he would have gotten the weird save yep. of three or more innings to finish a game. You don't factor in as the winning pitcher, then you're the, you're the pitcher that gets the save. So that would have been a lot of fun, but still to say that two games that that's two bullpen games against the Los Angeles Dodgers for the Cincinnati Reds, 18 innings, seven hits. No, no, no. Sorry. Eight hits allowed three walks, three runs. That's it. That's all this bullpen has given it's up against the, them in the, bullpen the best lineups games. in baseball. Yep. And, 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 and the reds 
on the whole, this, this entire series, the, the bullpen was just absolutely on fire. I mean, if, if Fernando Cruz is back, he's, he's not giving up those walks and things like that anymore. Alexis Diaz looks back. Lucas Sims still a little bit shaky, but he was able to get some fly ball outs, which has kind of been his MO throughout his career. That's not something that's going to change, but all in all this pitching steps, even, and I told you this as we were prepping for today's show. Um, and I think this would surprise some, it, it, the, the, uh, listener here with us today. If you're an every day, you know how much we love this stat when it comes to the reds, but the fan graphs wins above replacement stat. It was something that loved the reds bullpen last year. And it loves the reds as a whole this year. They are top five in major league baseball for war for their entire pitching staff, starting pitching bullpen top five five in major league baseball. Steve, I didn't think this pitching staff would be this good. And this just shows that if the lineup can be any version of what we expected it to be coming into the season, this team is back in a big way. And anybody that thought they were dead is completely wrong. You got, you got to admit right now, watching this series, if, if you didn't have the Al Pacino feeling, if you didn't watch this, this series and say, just when they think I'm out. They pull me back in because my goodness, Steve, this was some good damn baseball. It was really good baseball. And, and I think it's going to continue to just get better and better. The, the one thing the reds really have going for them is they're playing in the one division in the national league that will allow them to come back from where they are right now. And, uh, you know, we said on our show Friday that they had to get moving. They didn't really have much more wiggle room. And it's nice to see them get moving. I want to ask you this. Uh, we talked about this a little bit during prep. Uh, the Reds have to make a move today. And as we're recording, that move has not been made. Nick Lodolo's coming off the injured list. He's going to start the game for the Reds. Somebody's going down. Uh, the obvious choices are either Brett Kennedy or Carson Spires. I think they send Spires down because he's going to be unavailable for the next couple days anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. Keep another arm in the bullpen in Brett Kennedy and then make a move later if you want to get Spires back. Because I think he's earned a look at more opportunity in the majors. But I do also think you got to keep fresh arms in the bullpen. So I could I I, I could see that. I I agree with you. And you, you flipped me because initially I'm just like, oh, well, you're sending Brett Kennedy down and all this other stuff, because I think that was the plan anyway. But yeah, they have used him a lot here recently, and I don't think he would pitch. I mean, at best, he would pitch at the end of this series. Mm -hmm. And if there is a situation where Nick Lodolo comes back in his first start after missing time for groin straight load management, <laughs> maybe he only gets, you know, he throws like 100 pitches in four innings. So then you bring in Brett Kennedy and you kind of bridge the gap a little bit. But yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I think that you could play that a little bit. Plus Spires has options. So you'd be able to send him down, call him back up, mm -hmm. no problem. All right. Well, I, I'm excited, Jeff. I'm excited yeah, about buddy. how this bullpen has looked. I'm, I'm excited about how the starters have looked. And you mentioned it, you teased it there for a second. But I think uh, one of the things that we're trying to get to is the infusion of some talent back in this lineup. And I, I think that's coming and we should probably talk about that coming up next. Get supplies from the site that's made for the skilled trades supplyhouse.com supplyhouse.com is the reliable way to order plumbing, HVAC and electrical products all online. Their easy to use website is packed with helpful resources and the latest product info to help you get the job done right. Shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over 400 top brands and get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. If you need help with an order, they have expert support and industry leading service with the friendliest folks in the business. And plus you get to talk to a real person every time. Pros in the skilled trades can get a competitive edge by joining supplyhouse.com's free trade master program. Every trade master gets access to a dedicated phone line, free shipping, and discounts on every order. Join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at supplyhouse.com slash TM. Order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at supplyhouse.com.
You can catch every pitch of the Reds hometown broadcast with Sirius XM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Reds. You can also catch some written Reds content over at Cincinnati Baseball Talk.com or sorry, Cincinnati Reds Talk.com. Uh, I'm writing over there. Steve's writing over there. Got a lot of great folks writing baseball about your Cincinnati Reds. All right, Steve, we got some, well, one encouraging update and one, I don't know if it's like that negative of an update, but we, we know now the date for Noel V. Marte's return. We know that CES pushed back just a little bit. Um, so, you know, we know this Reds lineup has to hold down a fort for about another month. And then they're basically going to be at full strength because there was some good stuff that the Reds general manager had to say about all this. Yeah. So the biggest part of this is talking about Noel V. Marte's return, um, because this is the, this is going to be uh, a little bit better than we thought, um, you know, suspended for the reasons he was suspended. I'm not going to dig into that, but he's eligible to come back on June 27th. Uh, he can start playing baseball in Louisville on June 6th. They, they have a That's built huge. in rehab period. He's going to be able yes. to hit the ground running on June 27th. He's going to be back on this roster. Um, along about the same time. In fact, probably they'll do a rehab stint together. TJ Friedel is still on track. He's been taking um, some, doing some baseball activities, but he still has pain in that thumb that was broken. So his timeline remains the same. He is going to be back somewhere between June 14th and June 21st. Uh, and that's going to be a big difference maker to have him back at the top of the Reds lineup. You put Noel V. Marte in this lineup, and then we're just waiting on CES after that. Yeah, and the, the source on the Noel V. Marte news is Nick Crawl himself. He was speaking with Jim Day, uh, their their weekly conversation on 700 WLW for uh, for the inside pitch leading into Reds games on WLW. But uh, he also had this to say. He said that uh, Christian Encarnacion Strand is still, quote, one month or so away. So that would probably put him right around the same time that Noel V. Marte is back. We're looking at June 23rd. It'd be a month from when he said this. Um, but June 23rd is when we're looking at him returning. So, I mean, we're talking about, we still got another month, but we're talking about a, a span of like a week to maybe 10 days where we will be getting 33% of the lineup that we were expecting to have back. So that also means, so that that's good news. Mm -hmm. And the other good news is it will move the roster in some kind of way. And we were trying to break this down a little bit. Uh, what was the consensus that we landed on with that? I, I think, you know, we'll just take it in order when uh, yeah. the, we'll do the easy one first, TJ Friedel, when he comes back, uh, I think it's pretty, it, it's pretty easy to just send Nick Martini back down. Um, I mm -hmm. think that her gives you a little bit more versatility. So in a one for one, I think I send Martini back down. I add Friedel to the, to the mix. Then when, Noel V. Marte comes back next. You raised an interesting point, and it's it's easy to say, well, you would just cut Mike Ford. I don't mm -hmm. think that's what they're going to do. Uh, I don't think they're just going to let him walk away until they absolutely have to. Uh, you raised a very interesting point surrounding Santiago Espinal. Yeah, because there's a hidden, like benefit to the addition of Santiago Espinal that Nick crawl made. And, and, and while I'm not going to make this a Santiago Espinal is going to bounce back segment. I do want to point out his numbers right now, nothing like the back of his baseball card. He is he's, he's down. He's going to come back at some point, but the hidden benefit is the fact that he is under team control until 2027 and Steve, he has not one, but two option years left. So the reds could send him down to triple a and incur. No, they don't have to put him on waivers or anything like that. He is one of those guys because we know that Nick crawl loves to play the options game. Santiago Espinal is a guy you can play that game with. So whenever you get back, uh, Marte or CES, I don't know. I'm starting to wonder if this is something that we see in Elvi Marte before we see CES, but whoever it is, mm -hmm. the one of the two, that next move would then be to send down Santiago Espinal. And then finally, when the third person comes back, you know, you have to make a decision. Are you sending her down or are you going to cut Mike Ford? Um, 
obviously Mike Ford and CES play the same position. Uh, so there is a little bit of a log jam there, but I think Mike Ford could be a pretty valuable guy off the bench late in a game guy at the end of your bench. He doesn't necessarily need to play a lot of defense. Um, I, I think it makes more sense that you would send her to be another left-handed outfielder down, let him continue to get everyday reps down in Louisville, keep Mike Ford. And, and then that's a fairly decent overhaul of the lineup while you're fighting for the playoffs and waiting to get Matt McClain back. And quite frankly, now having watched him play a little bit, if you want a comparison for who Jacob Herdebees is, Jacob Herdebees is Jake Fraley without the power. Like he's got mm -hmm. the speed, he's got the contact ability, pretty solid plate discipline. I've been pretty impressed with how he handles his at bats and plays solidly in the field, but they have that guy. So mm -hmm. you could kind of stomach setting him down. And of course he has the options. You could keep Mike Ford for the supposed pop. We haven't really seen it, but he has the pop just hasn't shown it. And so maybe we see it at some point. And if that doesn't work, then you could make that move a little bit later on. But the whole point with this is with these three guys returning, we're not talking about the consistent need to have Mike Ford start because you're going to be able to DH either CES, DEH with CES. I'm getting too many E's in there. Um, you're going to be able to DH <laughs> CES or Jamer Candelario, who by the way, did miss on Sunday, but it was, um, or Saturday and Sunday, but it was for uh, neck stiffness. I don't, I don't know that he's going to hit the IL for that or not, but that, that we're talking about basically the, the reds being at full strength, just minus Matt McClain, who hopefully we would get back here in a few months. Yeah. I, I think that, you know, now it's a case of, they just have to make it from point A to point B. Um, yes. What this lineup as constructed right now, without these players has shown us, they can keep the reds in baseball games. They can score some runs at times. And with the way that the pitching has been, Getting into the easier part of the schedule now, this team can make a run. They're, they are primed to make a run, and I'm here for it. And you know the point we didn't make, and we'll make this real quick, because um, every dayers will know that we've been a little bit at disagreements as to which has been the, the biggest culprit so far for the Reds, mm -hmm. whether it's the lineup or the bullpen. To your point, we've seen how good the bullpen can make this team. Mm -hmm. And there were games in this Dodger series that they were giving up two weeks ago. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's on the bullpen, not, not because they didn't hit enough. I mean, Saturday and Sunday, the Reds scored a pretty normal amount of runs. They didn't go crazy. So I could see the effects of the bullpen being competent and a point to your side of this argument, where that is that the bullpen was the biggest problem because had the bullpen not blown, you know, I mean, I mean, maybe they're not perfect, but if they hadn't blown two or three of those games, this record looks a lot better. Yeah. They would have been over 500. <laughs> if, the, if the bullpen could just hold the lead in one run games, this team would have been over 500. So, so yeah, absolutely. I love it when you tell me that I'm right. And on that note, <laughs> that is where we're going to go ahead and wrap it up for today. Thanks so much for making Locked on Reds your first listen of the day. Every day is coming up tomorrow. We're going to get into the St. Louis Cardinals series. We'll be talking about the return of Nick Lodolo and hopefully be talking about a four-game win streak. Make sure you've clicked subscribe. Make sure you've clicked the notification bell. Make sure that you tell your friends to tune in each and every day. Because why, Jeff? Because we are Locked on Reds every single day. I love being right. I love when the Reds win.